In stage five, we're going to move into project execution. Project execution is interesting for the state project manager because they have different tasks that they might oversee and certain ones that might be overseen by the vendor that was chosen during stage four. In the case of the state project manager, we're going to take a brief look at every different area of management that's possible. We're going to start with managing the tasks on the project where they're actually assigning tasks to maybe vendors or maybe other state employees. We're also going to look at how those state employees are recording time against those tasks that they were assigned. We're then going to look at the actual financial records. We're going to look at the planned financial records that the project manager is able to put in and then the actual realized part of those records as well. We'll look at the project status reporting capabilities and then finally we'll look at managing the resources that are required for the project. So let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. Before we leave the planning console, we'll take a look at a few things. One of the things I can do here is I can look at my critical path. Another thing I can do if I, I wanted to is I can come over here and actually baseline the project. This way I can see from that baseline how much did we deviate over time. The other things I'll be doing in here is the project manager. If I'm providing oversight, I might be adding additional tasks. And then I want to say I want to add five tasks. And in, within that step, I could now say for the initiating phase, I'm going to assign different people to the tasks in that initiating phase. Now, just like if you were going to do an incident in ServiceNow or a request, these phases would have timelines and people would get assigned a ticket. So I'll say run startup meeting. We want to assign that to, let's say we want to assign it to Joni. So we can come in here, click on our assign to. And what's happening behind the scenes when we're actually doing this is it's sending a ticket out to Joni in this case. To run the startup meeting, we're going to give Joni a little bit more time than one day. So we're going to give her four days. This is giving Joni a certain amount of time. She's getting information that she is assigned this task and when that task needs to be executed. If you look at the top, I am assigned, I'm Paul Martin, and I'm assigned to a task of this whole project. Now, at some time, I might need to come in and record time against this. Joni's not going to take four days of her time to do this. She's going to need to record time. ServiceNow does have a time reporting portal, and I'll, I'll give you a quick look at that. I'm just going to jump in as Paul Martin because that's who I'm logged in as right now. If I go to the timesheet, you'll see that Paul Martin is assigned certain tasks, and those tasks are what he can take time against. In this case, I am running the electronic health records project. And what I can do is I can take time against that project. Electronic health records is down here. I'm in my week of September 26th. And I could say on these days, I took so many hours. I took five hours here, four hours here. I could say I worked the whole day on this day. On this time I had a meeting and I could take some time against the meeting. And these will feed the actuals into the project, which the project manager will be able to go ahead and approve or not. There might be other things that Paul's working on too. Any of the tasks that are in Paul's queue, he could add to his time card and then take time against that. This is really valuable when you're saying what are the plan times versus the actual times for the project. The next thing I want to take a look at is the financials. If we jump over to our financials tab, this is where we get to more of a detailed financial planning than what we had looked at in the demand record. There's already some cost plans in here. These cost plans may have come up from the demand record depending on how detailed you are in the demand record. We might want to add new costs to the project. And the cost could be, I have external labor, I have internal labor, I have software. I could say maybe this is going to be computers. So I'm going to buy some computers. When do I need this? I could say I need this starting in January, somewhere between January and March I need this. The cost type is going to be hardware and there's different cost types you can specify. I'm going to say it's going to be CapEx on hardware. I could pick a model if I want to and this would bring those models from my inventory. One of the big benefits of having the inventory management on platform as well. You could also do the cost. I'm just going to say I need five computers they're going to be $4,000 each. This is where you get to some of the general cost planning. 
And then what will happen later in this financial summary, as we get the information in on the actuals, the expense lines, ideally by integrating with your expense systems, we'll be able to look on those different months and see what the actuals are coming in. Then I can see what is the variance from my plan cost against my actual. I can see if I went over or under in different fiscal periods. I could look at it by the quarter. I could look at it by the year. It gives me a really good way to go ahead and make sure that my financials for my project are being recorded. The benefit plans let you say, how much am I going to realize at the end of the project plus six months, the project plus 12 months? You can put in those plans and this would give me a value realization or expected value realization. And this will be really important in stage six during our peers report because we want to see what we expected and then we can compare that against what we actually got in project implementation plus six months or project implementation plus 12 months. The benefit plans are really nice to revisit in terms of those value realization pieces. The next piece we want to jump over to status. There is a status report and I'm able to go ahead and create a new status report. And what it'll let me do as a project manager is report on each of these different areas. So I'm going to say green and I could say overall. I can say my schedule is going to be yellow. And you might want to provide some governance here. Usually we say never go from, from green to red. Always go from green to yellow. So this gives the project manager a, a, an opportunity to communicate up. Now once the project manager, let's say they did a pretty nice executive summary on the overall status and they save that next week they want to go ahead and run another status report but they don't want to copy all of the things over again that they had done originally instead of create i can copy the status report and this will bring my costs up this will bring all the statuses i reported and it will also elevate a lot of the things that i'm managing in the project such as issues decisions actions even lessons learned can bubble up into this status report pretty easily. In resources, you're able to go in and actually manage the team. There's a couple different states. When I ask for program manager, it's in planning right now. I can search and pick people from the team if I'm allotted that permission as the project manager. Sometimes what happens is you have to send these resource requests to the resource manager or to the team manager, and they're the ones that approves the time cards and says which of my team members are filling in those roles to serve that time. These move from planning to allocated, or planning to requested to allocated. So it's a very nice way to keep track of the people. And it's the same thing here. You're gonna have a plan. You're gonna have how much was confirmed. And then at the end, you'll be able to get actuals and put their time into their timesheets. Once that time's taken against the project, you can map it against the plans for the resources that you expected them to be used for the project. Before we wrap up this section on oversight, we want to visit some of the reporting capabilities. There's a few dashboards out of the box, like this PMO dashboard that you see here. But the main thing that we're going to want to look at is the project investment portal. The project investment portal gives you the ability to group projects together and provide information on those projects to other stakeholders. In this case, we have three PAL projects that are in process. And this would be the dashboard to oversee all of those PAL projects without going into the individual projects themselves. So right now I have these grouped by PAL stage. If I want to group them by something else, I can pivot on whatever I want. So if I want to pivot by the department, I can drag that up here and that'll create the pivot by department. So what we want to do is we want to get this set up how we want it. This is, out of, this is the default how it was shared to me. You can see that the one project that we're working on is the electronic health records. And we just put in a status report. We're right now we're 95% done. We just put in a status report. If they wanted to see the latest status report, they can click on that status report and it would bring it up. So there's no need to send status reports around or remind people they're there. These status reports are provided as the project managers finish them. They'll give them the most recent one. They do get those statuses that were in the reports to communicate it up and they can see all the information on the timelines. They can get some details on the financials. These are configurable. If I wanted to show additional information or not share as much information, I can go ahead and turn things on or off. And then what I would be able to do is save this and then I could share these to groups of people. What we can do on the top is we can 
vary what we see on the top. In this case, I see one demand that's in stage one, it's, and then three in-flight projects that are in different PAL phases. Once I go ahead and save this, and I say, what do I want on the top? What widgets do I want to see on the top? What widgets do I want to see on the bottom? I can go ahead and share this to groups of people or to individual people. That's some of the reporting. We'll take a little bit more of a look at this reporting when we move into the post-implementation evaluation. But for now, just remember that we do give in reporting an overview, a timeline representation, and then also a current financial representation of each of the different projects that are in flight. So here are all, that, all those costs that I was just putting in. They all bubble up into these projects. That's a little bit about project oversight. Join me for the next phase where we talk about the post-implementation evaluation.